This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. The Eastern Indigo Snake is one of the most iconic and the largest native snake in North America. Without our help, the Indigo Snake, along with some of the other reptiles sharing the same habitat, may be lost forever. I'm Greg Graziani, retired law enforcement officer and professional reptile breeder with a passion for wildlife. This episode of the Python Hunter is all about conservation. We're going to be working on a federally permitted Eastern Indigo conservation project where we head out into the field and attempt to collect some Eastern Indigo snakes and get some much needed data for the study. You know, I'm really lucky to live in a place that has such pristine habitat for the Eastern Indigo snake. You know, on average, we find anywhere from five to ten Eastern Indigos a year in this area. We're headed out to a preserved scrubland where we may have a really good chance of finding an Eastern Indigo snake. As I hike through this beautiful Florida scrublands, unfortunately the first thing I come across are the remains of a gopher tortoise. Check this out over here. You know, this right here is one of the reasons Florida Fish and Wildlife has posted these signs to stop people from releasing gopher tortoises into this area. Um, this, this habitat is so pristine and so perfect for these animals that when people find it and they develop other areas, they want to relocate the animals to here. And what they don't understand is the habitat that exists here can only support the animals that are already here. I'll check this out. This right here is a really good sign. Okay, to most people, they wouldn't know what this is. But this is feces from a gopher tortoise. And you can see, if you break this apart, what the tortoise has been eating. Barely even looks digested. Look at that, he's, he's got pieces of leaves and mainly grass. They're grazing animals. And, and this, is the, this is the sign that there's gopher tortoises here. We've seen burrows. We haven't actually come across the tortoise. We found a dead tortoise but we know they're definitely here. So we're gonna keep looking for the endangered gopher tortoise and the eastern indigo. I haven't found a tortoise, but this next little guy has the advantage in this terrain. This is a lightning fast southern black racer. He's found a nice little palmetto patch to take cover in, but once I spot him, he has nowhere to go. He quickly changes gears from flight to fight. This is not aggression, this is strictly a defensive behavior. He would much rather flee than expend the energy it takes to fend me off. This is the Southern Black Racer. A lot of people mistake these as indigos, but they're a much faster, smaller moving snake. And they need to be, because if an indigo gets a hold of one of these guys, he's going to swallow him alive. He gives me one more little nip just to let me know he's ready to go. Let's go ahead and put this guy back where we found him and let him go on his way. Oh, here we go. Check this out right here. This is 
really cool. This right here is a juvenile gopher tortoise, which is great because it means these guys are, are thriving out here and reproducing. But look, look at the size of this hole compared to my hand. So that tortoise right there is gonna be about this big. It's gonna be a sub-adult. It's not a hatchling tortoise. We've got uh, a good, healthy population of these gopher tortoises. It's time for the Python Hunter Question of the Week. How many venomous snakes are native to Florida? Six, 12, or 18? Go ahead and post your answer in the comment section down below and stay tuned for the answer later on in the show. Coral snake right there. Oh man, he's getting under the brush. What I don't realize is I'm digging where I saw him disappear and he's crawling under the leaf litter between my feet. Don't ever attempt to capture a venomous snake. I've had a lot of experience collecting and working with native venomous snakes. And although my skill level is high, I'm still risking a potentially life-threatening bite. Once I locate him, I get my tongs in there to minimize the possibility of a bite. With him safely. Uh, my adrenaline is really pumping, man. I thought we lost this guy. I did not think I was going to find him. This is one of my favorite animals right now. And uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful coral snake. Drop for drop, the deadliest snake in North America. You know, there's a lot of myths about this animal having to chew or gnaw. The fact of the matter is, this animal has two front fixed fangs. Oh man, I'm out of breath, I'm all scratched up trying to get this animal. Once he went under that brush, I didn't think we'd get him, but we got this guy. As I was saying, the coral snake has two small front fixed fangs, and all they have to do is break the skin to envenomate their victim. Not an eastern indigo, but another snake on the diet of the eastern indigo. All right, let's bag this guy up, see what else we can find. Coral snakes are not a protected species. As a matter of fact, they're quite plentiful in the wild, just extremely hard to find because they spend most of their time under the leaf litter. Since there's a shortage of coral snake antivenin, we're going to donate this animal to Carl Barton over at Medtoxin Venom Laboratories, where he'll be placed on the venom line and used to make much needed antivenin. Since I was unable to locate an eastern indigo snake, check out this footage of my wife catching one earlier in the season. She knows how much we need to get the data off of this snake, so there's no way she's going to let this one get away. Now that we have this beautiful specimen, we'll take it back to our facility and collect all of the required data. The first thing we're going to do is check the sex of the snake by inserting a probe into the vent towards the tail of the snake. If it's a male, the probe will go deep into the snake's tail running the length of the hemipene. If it's a female, the probe will be stopped just a few scales in by a scent gland. This is a big healthy male. Next, we take a length measurement of the snake. There's a good possibility that we may recapture this animal again 
and we can get some growth data from our measurements. Finally, we need to get a scale clipping for the DNA study. The scale clipping will also leave a mark on the snake to identify this animal during a recapture. I will need to make three cuts in order to remove a portion of the scale for testing. The first two cuts are made up and down, and the third cut is across to remove the scale. The scale is placed into a capsule with a preserving solution and sent to the lab for analysis. Then the data is collected and recorded for the study. My daughter Lexi gets the honor of releasing this magnificent and iconic snake back into the wild. It's time to answer the Python Hunter question of the week. How many venomous snakes are native to Florida? There are six native venomous snakes that call Florida home. Five pit vipers and one elapid. The Florida cottonmouth, the southern copperhead, the dusky pygmy rattlesnake, the eastern diamondback rattlesnake, the canebrake rattlesnake, and the eastern coral snake. You know, I've grown up my whole life catching wild snakes in Florida, but to be able to go out and capture endangered eastern indigo snakes at a wildlife conservation project, that's just been awesome. You know, the research in that study will not only help the eastern indigo, but it'll help all of the wildlife in this beautiful habitat of Florida. That'll do it for this week's episode of the Python Hunter. Feel free to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and leave a comment down below letting us know what you thought about the show. We'll see you next week. All right, so I'm going to show you another reason why I'm building such a large tortoise pond, and uh, that has to do with the large tortoise behind me. This is Darwin. Come on down here, folks. Darwin is a 350-pound Galapagos tortoise. This is ABTV.